It says, out of the innermost being shall flow rivers of living water. It's not about religion. It's not about just coming to church. It's about saying, Lord, only you can satisfy my soul. I don't know what you're facing. I don't know what you're going through today. But there is a God that says, I want to satisfy you. I want to fill you to overflowing. There are so many things in this world that can distract us, so many things that can get us sidetracked. We can be focused on a lot of things, uh, uh, family situations, marriage situations, financial situations. But there's a God that wants us to dig into Him. He wants us to abide in Him. And I just want you to close your eyes and you just begin to say, Lord, you come and satisfy my soul. I don't know what you're facing, but there's a God that says, if you will cast all your cares upon me, I'll care for you. I got a text this week and uh, on Friday from my sister and hospice called and uh, said that my mother is not waking up anymore. And just praying that God, I I'm gonna ask you to pray with me. Lord, let her have graduation. Let her be grudged. Take her out of her suffering. It can be, that can be distracting. Can, I can have my focus on that. But today I want to focus on the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, one of our worship leaders from the South Campus, Heather, is in the hospital right now. And we need to uh, lift her up. And, and there's others that are going through. And you, I don't know what you're facing. I don't know if those who are watching us live, what you're going through. But there is a God that says that we need to draw from him. We need to push into him. So I just want us to lift up our voices. Just you begin. Don't listen to me pray, but you begin to pray. You begin to cry out to the Lord. You just begin. It says, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto him. Let's just lift up our voices. Let's just worship him. Hallelujah, Lord. Glory to your name. Come on, church. Let's worship him. He is worthy of our praise. He's worthy of our focus. He's worthy of our devotion today. Lord, we lift up your name and exalt you, Lord. Lord, we glorify you today, Lord. And Lord, no matter what the circumstances are that are going on around us, Lord, Lord, you said to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these other things shall be added unto you, Lord. Lord, you said to be anxious for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Present your request of God and the God of peace will be with you Lord and Father I pray Lord that Lord that, that Lord that you would just satisfy us you would be the satisfier and oh God we talked about that last week Lord that we need you to satisfy us Lord you need to satisfy us on the inside Lord Lord there's so many things that would come against us trying to disturb us and distract us Lord and Lord I pray oh God that Lord that you said that we're two or three are gathered together in your name Lord Lord there you are right in the midst of them, Lord. And so, Lord, I pray for those that are here in person, those that are watching online. I pray, Lord, today that, Lord, and Lord, that we would turn the distractions off, Lord. And, Lord, you said to go into your closet of prayer, go into that so, uh, a quiet place, uh, that place alone with you, Lord. And, that, Lord, that you said when we delight ourselves in you, and, Lord, that you will give us the desires of our heart, Lord. And, and so, Lord, we just bring our burdens, our stresses, our anxiety, our fears, our, our worries to you today, Lord. And Lord, to know that you are more than enough to satisfy. You are more than enough to meet us, Lord. You are more than enough to do exceedingly abundantly more than we could even ask or imagine, Lord. Lord, right now, Lord, we lift up Heather to you, Lord. I pray, Lord, that you would go to that hospital room, Lord, and, and then, Lord, that you would touch her. I pray, Lord, whatever is, uh, is issue, that, Lord, that you would minister to her right now, Lord. Lord, you said, Lord, Lord, that you sent your word and healed us of our disease, Lord. I pray for others, Lord, that are headed for surgery this week, Lord. I pray, oh God, that, Lord, that your grace would be more than enough, Lord. I pray, oh God, that you would guide the surgeon's hands, Lord. I pray, Lord, for easy recoveries. I pray, Lord, in the name of Jesus, that, Lord, that you would minister. I pray for that one that has lost a, a, a child this week, Lord. And, and, Lord, as they are gathering the family together and, and Lord, having to plan the funeral, I pray, Lord, your your grace and your mercy over that family, Lord. Lord, I lift up my own mother to you right now, Lord, and Lord, you know the desire of her heart is to be with you, Lord. I pray, oh God, that Lord, that right now, Lord, that, and Lord, that your mercy would minister to her, Lord. I pray, Lord, no more pain, no more suffering, no more going through all that she's going through, but that Lord, today, Lord, that you would just give her a light. Lord, she knows you. She's going to be with you, Lord, and I just commit her into your hands today, Lord. I thank you 
Lord, that Lord, that you are more than enough, Lord. Lord, you're more than enough, Lord. You're more than enough, Lord. And we worship you. We exalt you. We give you praise and honor and glory. Lord, we just say, Lord, we love you. I pray for every other need that's represented, Lord. Every situation, Lord. Maybe nobody else knows it, Lord. But Lord, I thank you, Lord, that Lord, that you're my good, good father. And that Lord, that you know exactly what we need, Lord. So I pray your blessing over your people today. And Lord, we'll give you all the praise, all the honor, and all the glory. For we ask it in Jesus' wonderful name. And all God's people said, amen and amen. Hey, before you see, why don't you turn around and just wave to somebody. Welcome them to the house of the Lord today. Pray that God will bless you today. I want to welcome you to those who are here in person, trying to do two things at once. I want you to take out your phone. I want you to share uh, the, the service today. Uh, to those who can be watching, your family and contacts and friends. So I'm just going to share it right now as well. So just hit that little share button and, pull, and, and it'll go out to all of your family and friends. And, you know, you never know who's going to watch and who's going to be a part of what uh, God wants to do. So I encourage you to share that. Uh, for those who are watching us online, I want to so thank you for tuning in today. Pray that God will bless you. Uh, we do have uh, in-person services on the weekend, online services during the week, and there's many ways that you can stay connected uh, with us here at ICC. Uh, and all of our services there, you can check it out on the webpage or on the, on the app as well. Uh, Tuesday night, we have a Spanish Bible study. On Wednesday night is my Bible study uh, at 7 o'clock. Uh, and then on Friday, we have uh, in Youth Instagram Live. We have Young Adult Instagram Live as well. Uh, also want to announce, you know, continue to announce that if you have prayer requests, people are go in need. Uh, we have a prayer ministry, and you can email your prayer request in 24-7, uh, ministry at iccnyc.org, ministry at iccnyc.org. And whether you come to ICC, whether you're around the world, different parts of the world where people are watching us, uh, someone was watching us from Nepal last weekend, uh, that you can send your prayer request in and that we will be uh, praying praying with you and our prayer team will be leading that prayer ministry. A couple of announcements I want to remind you of that uh, come beginning at, uh, at the end of the month and uh, for the in-person services, you need to reserve your spot uh, as soon as that's available. Uh, and so Greg and Robin Hubbard will be with us beginning on Friday, August 28th at 7.30. Uh, and then on Sunday, August 30th at 8, 10, and 12. And those are in-person services as well as online. Uh, and so you need to reserve for your spot for that because this is uh, on social media. It's on Greg's Facebook page and all of that. So uh, there will be other people that will be coming as well. And then on Monday night, August 31st, and Tuesday night, September 1st, that's only online, no in-person services from Monday and Tuesday. But then on Wednesday, September 2nd, Thursday, September 3rd, will be in-person and online services, and so you need to reserve for that. And then on Friday, September 4th, and Sunday, September 6th, 8, 10, and 12, those are both in-person and online, so you just need to sign up for what service, service or services that you're going to come to, uh, because once we hit 150, uh, the, the city has not given us permission to increase the attendance that we can have, uh, so we, we need you to do that. And then also uh, for the men, a uh, very special announcement. This is uh, that, this, that was supposed to be the weekend for our men's convention, September uh, 18th, 19th, and 20th. Uh, but due to everything, we're not able to do that. But on Saturday afternoon, on Saturday, September 19th, we're going to have a special men's service with Jamel Mayo. Jamel will be with us all weekend, but it's a men's only service on Saturday totally different than everything else that's going on that weekend, but just for that service for men. And again, we can only have 150, and this is being open to other churches on Staten Island uh, and other men's group that had come to our, um, our weekly men's breakfast when we're able to have them. And so it's Saturday, September 19th, 2 to 4 o'clock in the afternoon. Uh, you know, all masks, social distancing are required, but you also need to go and sign up for this. This one is already that you can reserve your spot. So men, uh, I'm just telling you now, when the 150 is over, that's over. And so that's for, for boys, that's for youth, it's for men. Just want to encourage you to go to our webpage or to our app and to sign up and to reserve your spot for that. 
A couple of other announcements. I want to remind you that when you leave today, these two sections go out this side and out that way. These two sections go out that way and go straight out that door. Uh, I want to encourage you. We I encourage you. We need to make sure the mask. You know, now that this has become an old hat. Uh, sometimes the mask are coming down. We got to keep them over the nose and during that, during the service. Uh, also, when we dismiss, it's from the back front. Uh, we're trying to keep everybody safe and healthy. And remember, social distancing when you do leave. I know we want to talk. We want to be with others. Uh, but we just want to keep everybody safe and healthy. We do not want any issues. Can I have an amen? We want to be safe. We want to keep everybody healthy. We don't want them closing down because if anything would happen, we would have to close down the church again. And I don't want to see that, and I know that you don't either. Uh, and so just please help us uh, maintain that uh, as well. We're, we're so thankful for your giving to ICC. Uh, and, and as this goes on, more and more things are happening, and we need your help. We need your giving. For those who are here, those online, God loves a cheerful giver. Uh, God gives to us, and he says with the same measure that we give, it's given back to us. Uh, so there's many ways that you can give here for those in person. There's an envelope in your uh, pew. You can also give uh, online. Uh, for those who are watching live, you can mail your check in uh, to ICC 1501 Richmond Ave, Staten Island, New York, and many have, have done that, and we appreciate that. Uh, but there's also, you can give through Smart Giving, and you can give through our webpage, iccnyc.org, uh, and, and everything updates are there. That's where you reserve for the services, all of that. Or you can download our app from the App Store at iccnyc, uh, and there's a giving place there. Or you can text your giving in, just take out your phone, and you can text in 77977, and then put in what campus, ICC Central, ICC New Dorp, ICC Spanish, or ICC Korean. And then you'll receive a text back, and you can complete your transaction there. So again, let's be faithful to God, because Lord, even in this difficult time, God has been faithful to us. Uh, I'm going to preach this morning on Jesus only wants his best for you. But we only see his best when we walk in alignment to him. And when we walk in alignment to him, he says, I will open the windows of heaven and pour out so much blessing that there's not room enough to receive it. So, Father, we come before you today. And, Lord, we thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness and your love and your mercy. Father, I pray, oh God, that, Lord, that we would sing that song again, I, only you can satisfy. And that, hallelujah, that, Lord, that you would satisfy us, that, Lord, that you would bless us, that you would help us. Father, I pray, oh God, today, that, Lord, that we would know that you're the only one that can bless us. You're the only one that can satisfy us. And, Lord, I pray today that you would just have your way. Bless the gift and the giver this morning. And, Lord, we'll thank you for it, for we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen.
Just Jesus, just Jesus is all that we need. Amen? Can we just say the name Jesus? Jesus. Just Jesus, just Jesus. You know, Jesus really does want his best for you. You know, Jesus doesn't wake up one day and says, hey, I think I'm gonna be good today to them. And then on a Monday morning, I know when I get up on a Monday morning, it's not probably my better day. Uh, and Jesus doesn't get up on Monday and says, I, I think I'm only gonna give them 25% today. Or I'm, I'm gonna do something bad to them. Jesus wants his best for you every moment of every day. And, and sometimes we have this idea, well, I messed up and so, so God is angry or God's against me. I want you to know, Jesus wants his best for you. Even in a pandemic, Jesus wants his best for you. When you get bad news, Jesus wants his best for you. When, when things aren't going the way we expect, Jesus wants his best for us. Jesus does nothing that is not the best for us. Things that we may not understand. Uh, we know what Jeremiah 29 and verse 11 says, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to do you good and not evil, to give you a future and to give you a hope. That there, God really is for you. That, that is something right there to say, thank you, Jesus. Are you awake this morning? This is the eight o'clock service. Jesus does everything the best. He does everything that's for our good. He does everything that is for our good. I want you to turn with me in your Bibles to Mark chapter seven, and we're gonna look at a story, a, a, a story of another miracle of the healing of a deaf man. And it's, we read in Mark chapter seven, beginning at verse 31, then he returned from the region of Tyra and went to side into the Sea of Galilee in the region of the Decapolis. And they brought to him a man who was deaf and had a speech impediment, and they begged him to lay his hand on him. And taking him aside from the crowd privately, he put his fingers into his ears. Now just think about that. How many of you would want somebody to put their fingers in your ears? Just think about that. And then after spitting, touched his tongue. And looking up to heaven, he sighed and said to him, Afada, that is, be opened. And his ears were opened, his tongue was released, and he spoke plainly. And Jesus charged them to tell no one, but the more he charged them, the more zealously they proclaimed it. And they were astonished beyond measure, saying, he has done all things well. He even makes the deaf hear and the mute to speak. And as we look at this miracle, I pray that we would be able to say that he does all things well, that he does all things for my best. He does things, all things for my, my betterment. And I want you to put yourself in the position of this deaf man. I want you to imagine yourself that you are completely cut off from the world. You hear no words, you hear no noises. You can't hear the sound of your family. You can't hear the, hear the birds singing. You can't hear uh, music playing. You cannot hear the cheers of the crowds. You cannot hear uh, uh, worship songs. You cannot hear anyone speaking to you. You never heard the words, I love you. You never heard the word, you never heard anything. This is what this man lived from the day he was born. He was in total isolation. Some of us have struggled over the last six months in this pandemic because we've been isolated but yet we're still connected with social media and we can be uh, you know, in touch with Instagram and all of those things. But this man was totally shut off from everyone and everything. He had no way that he could communicate. And so in, in, in Mark chapter seven, uh, Jesus arose, he goes to the Tyre and Sidon and he entered a house and did not want anyone to know, yet Jesus could not be hidden. And, and so people found, wherever Jesus is, people are gonna find him. Uh, 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 the presence of Jesus cannot be kept secret. We want to say, well, how, what's going to bring revival to the church? What's going to bring revival to America? It's simply just Jesus. 
When Jesus is in your house, it changes everything. When Jesus is in your family, it changes everything. When Jesus is in the church, it changes everything. You know, we think, well, we need this program and that. Hey, the church has been shut down for six months. And guess what? Jesus is still Jesus. It's not saying, well, we, you know, people say, well, we need this, get this back and that back. No, we just need Jesus. And when Jesus is King of Kings and Lord of Lords and, and we welcome him, he takes care of the programs. He takes care of the situation. The greatest promotion for the church is not our social media or our webpage or our app. And thank God that we can use all of them. But the greatest promotion for ICC. It's not our worship. It's not our music. It's just Jesus. And when Jesus is in the house, that's what is needed. How many churches want everything else but Jesus in the house? We want our cake. We want our coffee. We want, you know, we need to get fellowship back. We need to have this thing and that. No, we just need Jesus. We just need Jesus. Uh, Some churches are are now saying that they're not even going to open up until 2021. Let me tell you, we need to open up because the church is in an essential place. We need Jesus because Jesus is just the answer. And I was encouraged on Friday night because there was one of our neighbors, and I, I can't tell the story because we're on social media, uh, but, but th- this, this person came, never been in, in a church like this before, and sat and came and, 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 and entered into what the Lord, let me tell you, that's the essential par- par- part of what a church is. It's just about Jesus. And we can say, well, we'll wait till 2021. But let me tell you, there are people that need Jesus today. We can't wait another six months to say, hey, we're going to get back to church and and we're just going to sit on the couch and watch TV. It's time that we get, Lord, we need your presence. We need your presence. You read in Mark 7, verse 31, he returned uh, uh, from the region of Tyre and went through Sidon. Jesus travels here to get some downtime. And as you look at this miracle, we see a, a, a story. And why did Jesus do what he did? Why did Jesus do what he said? Well, let's, what can we learn from this miracle? And you can, the notes will be online in a little while. We see the problem and the need and the crisis that needs a miracle. Look at what Jesus does to this deaf man. First of all, Jesus separates him from the crowd. When you see the condition of this man, he was deaf, he could not speak, he could not hear noises. This man was unable to communicate with anyone. In verse 32, it says, and they brought to him a man who was deaf and had a speech impediment, and they begged him to lay his hands on him. See, the crowd always wants Jesus to do what they want him to do. We we, we, we want to chase Jesus for what Jesus can give to us. There are too many people that all they they want more from Jesus, but they don't want more of Jesus. That's a world of difference. And the crowd says, we want Jesus to touch him. We want Jesus to heal him. But what you know what has been the problem with, with the last six months in this COVID nineteen? We gotta wear the mask, we gotta wear gloves, we're in public, you know, we're isolated, we, we can't touch, you can't be with your old elderly parents. You, you know, we even in my mother's condition, my, my sister can't even get in there only once every two weeks. Well, my mother's not might not make it for two weeks. Uh, you know, so and, and you imagine I can imagine what my mother must be feeling. Where is everybody? Where is my family? Why why am I in this condition? And, 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 and how many of us have battled that? No handshakes. You can't hug somebody. You can't touch somebody. You can't pray with somebody. Uh, you know, all of these things. And people need to be touched. Can I have an amen? We, 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 we need that. We're social. We, we need fellowship. We need people to be with. Babies need to be held. Children need to know that mom and dad are there. And people need today. They need touch. But what they need more than your touch or my touch is the touch of Jesus Christ. They need his presence. There's an old song we used to sing. He touched me, he touched me, oh, he touched me. And oh, the joy that floods my soul, something happened, and now I know he touched me, and he made me whole. Man, you can have everybody touching you in this world, but one touch from Jesus, it will change your life, and you will never be the same again. We're never going to make it. We're never going to get through what's going on in our day today. Unless we have the touch of Jesus. See, the crowd expected Jesus to touch them. Uh, They expected Jesus would heal this man in front of them. And see, crowds want to see the miracles. And and, and people are running to all kinds of miracles. But what we need to do is we need to run to Jesus. We need not to run to the miracle. Let me tell you, you run to Jesus. Jesus says, these signs will follow them who follow after.
after me. We're chasing signs. Stop chasing the healing and the blessings and the miracle and the finances and chase after Jesus. And Jesus will fill you. He will satisfy you. Friends, we want the results, but we, Jesus wants a relationship with us. And what does Jesus do? The crowd wants them to touch Jesus. The crowd wants them to see the miracle. And in verse 33, it tells us, and taking him aside from the crowd privately, he put his fingers into his ears. Huh? Doesn't that seem gross? Now, aren't you glad when, I, if, when we do have altar services, able to have them? You, aren't you glad I don't put my fingers in your ears and, and, I, and I pull my fingers out? What? what, 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 what? No. Uh, uh. <laughs> and, and, and so Jesus takes this man and puts his fingers into his ears. And then he spits on his fingers and touches the man's tongue. Why, why would Jesus do that? The same way that Jesus wants to, he takes that man aside. He wants to deal with him privately. He's not a show. He's not, he's not something for everybody. You know, we want to see the big show. Jesus isn't into the show. He wants to deal with where we are in our spiritual life. See, Jesus, he, he brings this man aside because he wants his eyes on Jesus, not on anybody else. How many of us get distracted spiritually when we're around people? How many of us, boy, you're looking around, who's sitting next to me today? Hopefully they don't have the, the COVID. Oh, you know, oh, who's sitting next to me? And do they have the mask on right? And, you know, and we're so concerned about who's next to me and, and should I worship or shouldn't I worship? Friends, all we need to be worried about is to put our eyes on Jesus to get away from the crowd. One of the good things about sheltering in this place is that we had a lot more alone time. And you know, I know we don't like to be alone, but let me tell you, God can do things when you are alone with him that he can't do any other time because we have so much the social media. Uh, uh, you know, my granddaughter's been living with me for two months and, and, and they're always doing, you know, they're always on something on the phone and we have so many distractions, TV, children, homework, all of that. And God is saying, no, I just need you to get along with me for a while. I need you to spend time in my presence. And, and, and he wanted this man in his presence. And listen what it says in Hebrews chapter 12. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, talking about those who have gone and be with the Lord in heaven, let us also lay aside every weight. How many things distract us because they're overwhelming in our life and we can be so overwhelmed by the weight of this world and the weight of what's going on politically and, and in the government and, uh, and, and the chaos and the hatred and the division uh, and the sin and, and, and sin and being not right with God and it weighs us down which clings to us so closely and let us run with endurance the race that is set before for us looking to who looking to Jesus the founder and the perfecter of our faith who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross despising the shame and is seated is seated he's not up in heaven said man I don't know what I'm gonna do oh America's falling apart let me tell you Jesus still wants his best for America he still wants his best for every nation. He wants his best for every person. Uh, 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 seated at the right hand of the throne of God. In verse three, consider him who endured from sinners such hostility against himself so that you may not grow weary, that you may not grow weary, but that you are uh, 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 faint hearted. See, something happens when we get away from the distractions of the world. Uh, sometimes we just gotta turn the news off. We, we listen to the news so much and we get so disturbed I don't know about you, but you get frustrated. You say, man, oh, another thing, another situation. You hear this commentator and that, prayer, and you don't know what to believe. Then we need to get along with Jesus and allow Jesus to touch us and to minister to us. He removed him from the crowd so that he would put his faith and his confidence in Jesus and not in others. And I think too many American Christians, we're putting our faith in somebody else to do the praying for us. Thank God for our prayer ministry. And we, we need to pray one for another. But we're looking for some preacher, some pastor, 
pastor, some apostle, some other person who, can, who has a gift of something. Let me tell you, Jesus is the giver of every good and perfect gift. And he has what's best for you. And, and many of us become intimidated by other people. Friends, worship is not about others. It, it, it's about an audience of one. And so we come in. We need to lift up the name of Jesus. We need to worship him. It's not about the song. It's not about the music. It's not about the person next to me. But when I worship, it's about me and him and him and me. And, and I lift him him up and I'm exalting him. And it helps me to forget about the issues of life. And Jesus removed this man from the crowd so that he could minister to him personally and privately. And there are some things that God will not do in the public place, but he'll only do it in the private place. And that's where the miracles may happen and the favor and the blessing and the anointing may happen. You know the story of the woman with the, uh, with the oil, the widow who lost her husband and, and Jesus Jesus says, hey, she goes to the man of God and, and, and I need a miracle. He says, I want you to go and I want you to get all the empty vessels. But then he says, I want you to go into your house. I want you to close the door. And he didn't want everybody and their sister looking. He says, this is going to be a miracle between God and you and your children. And so she went in, closed the door and she poured the oil and nobody else knew what was going on. But the oil kept flowing. Let me tell you, there's a Jesus that wants to get us alone. There, Jesus told the people when you pray when you pray go into your room and close the door we read that in Matthew chapter 6 and verse 1 and we said beware of practicing your righteousness where before other, oh, so we act spiritual on Sunday. We, we want people to look at us and say, look at me, how spiritual I am. In order, for what reason? In order to be seen by them. Hey, man, I want everybody to think how spiritual I am, or how religious I am, or how good I am. Jesus says, no, don't do that. For then you will have what? No reward from your Father who is in heaven. Thus, when you give to the needy, sound no trumpet before you as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets that they may be praised by, oh, I, oh, I want you to praise me. Oh, I want you to say how good I am. And no, Jesus says you don't do that, that they may be praised by others. Truly, I say to you, they have received their reward. You want people to applaud you? That's all the reward you're going to get. Hey, I don't want your praise. I want the reward that comes from God. I want God's best on my life. I want God's best on my marriage. I want God's best on my family. I want God's best for my grandchildren. But when you give to the needy, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. So that that your giving may be in secret. And here it is. And your father who sees in secret will reward you. And when you pray, you must not be like the hypocrites for they love to stand and pray in the street corners and in the synagogues that, that they may be seen by others, seen by others. Oh, look at them. Oh, they wear the right clothes. They look so spiritual and so religious that they may be seen by, truly I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your father who is in secret and your father who sees in secret will reward you. And when you pray, do not heap up empty phrases as the Gentiles do, for they think that they will be heard for their many words. Verse 8, do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you even ask. God is saying, I want you to connect with me. I am the only one that can satisfy. I'm the only one that can meet the need. We read in John chapter 15, beginning at verse 1, I am the true vine, and your, my Father is the vine dresser. Every branch of mine that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes that it may be more fruit. Let me tell you, God's best. God's going to cut some things off of our lives. And over these last six months, there's some things that God maybe has had to cut off. There's other things that God has had to prune. And, and, and when he cuts it, when he prunes it, it's for our good. He's trying to develop more fruit in our life. Not more outside things, but more fruit that comes from him. Already you are clean because of the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Let's not get that twisted. You know, we're not the vine and he's the branch. He's the vine and we're the branch. 
Whoever abides in me and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit. Here it is. For apart from me, without his blessing, without his favor, without his presence, we, will, we are unable to do, we can do nothing. Verse six, if anyone does not abide in me, he's thrown away like a branch and withers and the branches are gathered, thrown into the fire and burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, here it is, ask whatever you wish, whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. What's the purpose? By this my Father is glorified that you bear much fruit and so you prove to be my disciple. Oh, I hope, oh, oh, God's gonna give me whatever I wish? No, because when you're connected to him, when you're abiding in him, when you're where God wants you to be, when you're in alignment to him, all you want is him. All you want is his will. All you want is his purposes. And that's, you know, and, and what, what, what has God spoke to us? God wants to separate us like he separated this man from the crowd. But quickly, Jesus spits. He not only separates, but he spits in verse 33. And taking him aside from the crowd privately, he put his fingers into his ears and after spitting, touched his tongue. What was Jesus doing? Who would want anybody to put their fingers in your ear? Who would want someone to spit? You know, right now we are, we're so isolated, we don't want anybody even to shake our hands. Never mind hug us. Never mind spit on their hands and touch our tongue. I mean, that's COVID 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. You're opening yourself up to everything you can if you're gonna allow someone to do that. But why did Jesus put his fingers into the man's ears? Why did he spit and put it on his tongue? You think about This man could not hear or speak. There was no way that he could express what was going on. Communication was a struggle for this man. So if this man was going to to understand what Jesus wanted to do, Jesus had to show him value and encouragement. He had to communicate by the only way this man could understand it. The only way this man could understand that Jesus knew what was going on was by the power of his touch. This man was deaf, so what did Jesus do? Jesus touched the ears because he couldn't hear. When he couldn't speak, so Jesus touched his tongue. It was the only way that this man would understand, hey, this Jesus knows exactly where I am. Jesus touched this man to express value to him to express love to him, to express compassion. You know, there are some things that we need to uh, uh, communicate where people are today. You know, sometimes we think everybody understands how we communicate. This generation doesn't communicate the same way our generation communicates. And, and, And so we need to be able to communicate in a way that would be able to communicate that God loves them and God, see, God loves every single person and values every single person and we need to communicate to, 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 to people. Uh, a, a, a person uh, has been parking their car here in the parking lot uh, and, and so I ran into them and uh, it's a young girl and uh, someone hit her car when it was on the street in a new car and, and so she asked if she could park it there and, and, and so uh, a couple times been talking to her, I've been communicating uh, when I see her, and, and she says, can I come to church? She came to church last, last week. You know what? You got to communicate. You know, I could have said, hey, this is our church parking lot. Get out of it. Don't leave your car here. You know, what, what, what would have that have done? That would have said, you don't, I don't value you. You know, go, go find some other place to park. Uh, but you know, we need to communicate. We need to communicate by social media. You know, I, I, I call my grandchildren. They don't answer the phone. But if I Instagram, if I, you know, if I tweet, uh, 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 Facebook or FaceTime them, guess what? Then they'll, they'll answer me. We need to, if we're going to reach this generation, we need to communicate like Jesus communicated to this man. He wanted them to be valued. People need more than religious phrases and more than tracks and more than religious duty. They need the touch of people. They need the touch of Jesus. And and this man was spiritually deaf and Jesus touches his hand, his ears. And as soon as Jesus touched his ears, the faith was awakened in this man. He touches the man at his point of need. You know what we need to do? We need to touch people where they're at. And let me tell you, people are all over the place today. 
And they need to know that there's someone, that there is a Jesus. Uh, and, and so Jesus touched this man, and guess what happened? There was a spirit of, of expectation. Jesus touched my ears, and Jesus touched me where I'm at, and something's going to happen. You read over in Matthew chapter 9, verse 28. When he entered the house, the blind man came to him, and Jesus said to him, Do you believe that I am able to do this? They said to him, Yes, Lord. Then Jesus, what? Touched their eyes. According to your faith, it will be done unto you. If you're having marriage problems, Jesus wants to touch your marriage. If you're sick in body, Jesus wants to touch your body. If you're battling addictions or bondages, Jesus wants to touch you. He wants to touch. Aren't you glad he touched us right where we are? It says in Matthew 17, 20, he said to them, because of your little faith, for truly I say to you, if you have faith like a grain of a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move, and nothing will be impossible for you. In 2 Corinthians 5, 7, for we walk walk by faith and not by sight and this man Jesus touched his ears and and all of a sudden a faith awakened in his life and friends we're going to need a faith that God will always do what is best too many Christians feel well God's against me let me tell you God is for you and if you have faith in Jesus Jesus will move the mountain. God can never do anything that is less than the best. God's not going to say, well, you know, I'm a little tired today, so I'm only going to give you 50% of what I can give. Let me tell you, when I walk in alignment to him and my faith is in him and in him alone, he says, I will do what's best. He's going to do what's best for my mother right now. He knows what's best for her. He's going to do what's best for your situation because he always wants, Lord, awaken our faith to believe you that all things are possible with God. All things are possible. No obstacle that you're facing today is too big or too difficult for God. Your sickness is not too big for God. Can I have an amen? Your financial need is not too big for God. Jesus spits and touches the man's tongue. And what was Jesus doing? There was no healing. There was no, you know, people say, well, let's spit and that'll do it. No, it it was a sign. The spit of Jesus was a sign of the life-giving flow that comes from out of him. Friends, it is a symbol of the flowing of Jesus power no matter what you're facing today Jesus has the power to save you the power to heal you the power to deliver you the power to provide for you the power to anoint you the power because the spirit that flows out of Jesus comes into us you think about Jesus wants to touch you can you picture this deaf man who could not speak and all of a sudden Jesus touches his ears and and Jesus touches his tongue and all of a sudden this man I we don't know how spiritually he was but all of a sudden his faith was awakened all of a sudden he said Jesus is here and Jesus touched me and friends it began to happen but then look what happens in the next verse in Mark 7 34 Jesus sees Jesus not only spits he not only separates but Jesus sees it says in Mark 7 34 and looking up to where to heaven Man, we got to begin looking to heaven once again. Three of you? We better begin looking to heaven. He says, when all these things are happening, look up for your redemption draweth nigh. How many of us are more concerned about looking down and looking around and, and we're hopeless and discouraged? Uh, and and, and, and the point, remember the story of Elisha's servant and he comes out and, and the enemy is all around and all he could focus on was the enemy and, and, and too many Christians, all they're focusing on is the devil and what's going wrong and, and look at all that's going on in our society. And, 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 and Elisha came out and he says, no, you gotta look up your eyes. You gotta look beyond the enemy and see that the army of the Lord encamps all all around and let me tell you we can look at all the things that are going on in our society and in our world today and we can get fearful we can get so discouraged and the church begins to look all we need to look up we need to look up to heaven we need to begin to put our eyes on him stop looking for every demon under every bush stop focusing on what can go wrong in life and let's start looking for the king of glory the king of glory to come in why did Jesus look up he knew that his only help came from God the 
Father. And if God, if Jesus had to look up to heaven, then how much more do you and I have to look up to heaven today? If Jesus prayed, then doesn't it make sense that we need to pray? If Jesus had to worship, doesn't it make sense that we have to worship? We need to trust God when we go to prayer. In Psalm 121, it says, I lift up my eyes to the hills. From where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord who is the maker of heaven and of earth. He will not let your foot be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. Behold, he who keeps Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your keeper in 2020. The Lord is your keeper in a pandemic. The Lord is your keeper when the doctor says you have cancer. The Lord is your keeper when your loved one is dying. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is the shade on your right hand. The sun will not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all evil. He will keep your life in verse 8 the Lord will keep your going out and your coming in from this time both now and forevermore the Lord is your keeper that's some good news today that no matter what the virus is doing no matter what is going on in Washington Jesus knew where his help came from and in the time of need and when we're in need if you're in need then I got to go to the right place because Jesus sees me Jesus is the answer but where am I looking Horizontal people who are only looking this way. Found this in my files. Horizontal people live agitated lives. If all you're doing is looking at CNN and Fox News, man, you can get very agitated. You look at all that's going on in social media, it can get you agitated. But vertical people can live anxious free. Those who are looking up to heaven. Hey God, all this stuff is going on. But I don't have to carry the anxiety. I can't fix it. But I can pray to a God. It says horizontal people toss and turn at night. And they're worried and they're fearful. But vertical people are able to sleep well at night. Horizontal people strive and fight and strive. But vertical people don't have to strive. Because they can cast all their cares on the Lord. Because because he cares for them. Friends, let me tell you, Jesus sees it all. He sees everything that's touching your life. He sees everything that's touching my life. He sees the motive. He sees what's going on. It says in Psalm 33, 18, behold, the eye of the Lord is on those who fear him, on those who hope his steadfast love. I am so glad that his eye is on me. Remember when I was a teenager, I wasn't a bad teenager but I was a teenager. Teenagers, for those that are here, don't have the experience to make wise choices and wise decisions. And I remember when I got my license and I'd be going out on a date, my parents would always say, remember the Lord sees everything you do. That scared the life out of me. Let me tell you, God sees everything, but he's not the mean cop, the mean detention person. His eye is on me because he wants what's best for me. His eye is on you. His eye is on my mother today. His eye is on you. Oh, it says in Hebrews 4.13, and no creature is hidden from his sight, but all are naked and exposed to the eyes of him. To him we must give an account. His eye is on He sees what you're going through right now. Oh, Jesus, uh, uh, in verse 34, he sighs, and, uh, and he said to him, a father, which means be open. Uh, that word sigh means that he groaned. How many of us have been groaning and sighing? You know, when we get stressed, you know, sometimes I'll, I'll, I'll just, shh. And Emma says, what's the matter? Nothing, why? Because you're sighing. It's a release. We go through things and we don't even have the words to express what we're going through. And, uh, and there will be such difficult things that we will go through. And, and there will be no words, no words that can help. And, and people will try to help, but there's no words. That's why I'm thankful for the ministry of the Holy Spirit. I, you can read Romans chapter 8, verses 18 through 27, but I don't have time to read it. But it says in the last couple of verses, likewise, the Spirit helps us 
in our weakness. For we do not know what to pray for as well. How many have ever been there? I don't know how to pray. I don't know what to pray. But the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groanings that need for words. And he who searches our heart knows what is the mind of the Spirit because the Spirit intercedes, intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. You know what Jesus is praying? He's praying God's will, God's best in your life right now. Why did Jesus sigh or groan over this deaf man? And why does he say? Because Jesus is a man of sorrow. He is acquainted with our griefs. He knows what you're feeling. He knows the pain. He knows the loss. He knows the broken heart. Jesus is sighing because he's touched with the feelings of our sickness and our cancer. Those who are going through chemo and radiation and, and all dialysis and all of those things. Now, let me tell you, there is a God that sighs. He, he, wants, he wants to minister to you. He is moved with compassion and love. He groans over those who are lost in their sin and addictions and his bondages. Uh, he is broken over the pain of a loved one passing away. He sees those who are in slavery to sin. And he gro- let me tell you, Jesus groans. He sighs over the condition of many marriages and families and, and churches that are living in defeat. He groans because he wants to walk in with his blessing and his presence and his peace and his provision and his power. But we have shut him out. He groaned. He's sighing over America. He's sighing over the condition of our lives. But not only does he sigh, but he speaks. He says the word of Father, which means to be open. He touches the man. He sees to heaven. He speaks to him. He spoke to that man. That word of Father means to be opened. He just said, be open. Be open. Here's the good news. Jesus sees what you're going through. He feels what you're going through. And Jesus releases and says, be opened today. Jesus spoke to this deaf man and said, be open. He's released from his disease. He's released from the chains, the, 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 the sorrow. He, he, he's released. Jesus says, you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. In Luke chapter 4, Jesus is speaking to us today. The Spirit of the Lord is upon him because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. Not bad news. I say, hey, well, that's the condition you're going to be in. There's nothing that can help you know. He has sent me to proclaim liberty, liberty, liberty to the captive and the recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed and to proclaim the year, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Friends, when Jesus is on the scene, it's the year of the Lord's favor. Friends, that's where Jesus wants to speak over your life today. He wants to speak that over your family. He wants to speak that over the church. He wants to speak that over our city, over our nation. Friends, that's what we need. We need Jesus to open us up. We need Jesus the anointed. We need freedom from our prisons, even if we're not in jail. There are Christians who are so bound in their prison, the prison of self. Uh, we need recovery. We need restoration. We need to be set free from alcohol and drugs and every other addiction. We need to be released from hurt and pain and unforgiveness and bitterness. We need to walk in the year of the Lord's favor, that this is the year that the Lord is going to bless me. Even in a pandemic, Jesus releases those who want to be released. If you don't want to be released, you're going to go out the same way you came in. But when you say, Lord, Lord, I need your touch. I need your presence. He says, I will release. But there are some people that don't want to be released. What do we need to be released from? There are those who are watching me, those who maybe are in this service. You need to be released from sin. You say, man, I can't get over this sin. This sin is such a big deal. Uh, And and it has such a strong cold on me. Jesus died on the cross to deliver us from the curse of the law, from the curse of sin. How many church people are in bondage to sin and you don't even want to admit it? Unconfessed sin will bind you up and tie you up. And when you're living in sin and you're out of alignment to God, you're never going to know God's best. You're never going to know his favor and his prosperity and his, his, his anointing. 
anointing, but when you come and say, God, I confess my sins, he's faithful and just to forgive me and to cleanse me from all unrighteousness and that I can be open today. I can be released today. He wants to free us from our guilt. How many Christians walk around with a cloud of guilt over them? I did this in my past and the enemy keeps bringing up your past, but Romans 8, 1 says, there is therefore no, no condemnation, no guilt, no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. Jesus wants to touch you and get rid of the guilt today. There are those who need to be free from addictions and bondages and, and they may be secret and private and no one else may know about them, but there is a God that sees you. There is a God, as my parents said, hey, the Lord sees everything you're doing. The Lord sees those secret addictions, those bondages that are binding you up and are causing you to walk in, in, in defeat. He says, today I open you up. I set you free in the name of Jesus. He, he sets us free from fear. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of love and of power and of a sound mind. And too many, crit, well, what's going to happen? And, and well, we're, we're dreading what's going to happen. Let me tell you, God already knows what's going to happen in November. It's not going to catch God by surprise. And it doesn't matter who's in the White House. Who matters is on the throne. And that he is a God that wants his best for you. Oh, there are some of us who need to be set free from bitterness and anger and, and, and unforgiveness. There is a God that says forgive. He wants to set you free. He wants to set us free from worry and anxiety and that is destroying us. Jesus speaks freedom. He speaks blessing over your life. But how will you respond? In verse 37, it says, and they were all astonished beyond measure saying he has done all things well. That means he, he has his best for you right now. He has his best for your life. Maybe your life has been a mess. Maybe it's been in the sewer. But there is a Jesus that says, he, I do all things well. I only do what is best. So I ask you today, how is your relationship with Jesus? Today, Jesus says, be open. Jesus values you. Jesus loves you. Jesus cares about you. He wants to touch you. Just one moment. He wants to bless you. I'm going to ask for every head to be bowed, every eye to be closed. Because we're going to sing that song, The Blessing. God wants to bless you today. Can I have an amen? Your head's bowed, your eyes are closed. You say, Pastor, that's me today. Oh, I need his touch in my life. I need his touch. I need his touch. Oh, Lord, as you touch this deaf man, you touched him right at his point of need. Lord, there are needs all over this room. There are needs for those who are watching me live today. Oh, God, we need your touch. We need your touch. We need your favor. We need your blessing. That God, you do all things well. Lord, you only do what's best. But, oh God, we must come into alignment with you. You say, Pastor, I'm here today. I need Jesus to come in. I need Jesus to touch me. There are things in my life that I am all bound up in. But Jesus says today, be open. Be released. And you say, Pastor, I'm here today and that's me. I need Jesus to touch me. I need Jesus to release me. And I want you, if that's you, I want you to stand to your feet. Not everybody, just those who need the touch of Jesus today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you for those. Thank you. Thank you. Just for those who are standing, just lift up your hands. You begin you begin talking to the Lord. Allow the Lord to minister, Father. And I pray for those who are watching me live and maybe you're today at home. And maybe you need the touch of Jesus. Maybe you are bound up in something. Maybe you need Jesus to touch you and to release you and to minister to you. I want you to stand up wherever you are at home. And I just want you to begin to pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. Glory to your name. I'm going to ask us all to stand because God sees who stood. Father, I come before you today. 
Father, we need your touch more than anything else. Oh, we need your touch, Lord. Lord, we need your touch today, Lord. Lord, we don't need another program. We don't need another religious exercise. We need your touch. Oh, just lift up your hands. The hot hand, lifting of hands is a sign of surrender. You just call out to your good, good Father, a God that loves you, a God that wants you his best for you. Father, I pray right now in the name of Jesus that, Lord, that you would touch people right as they are. Oh, as we that old song, he touched me, he touched me. Oh, he touched me. Lord, touch us, Lord, on Sunday morning. Touch us in this early service today, Lord. I pray, oh God, that Lord, touch us at our point of need. You know what, what is going on. You know the situations. But Lord, I pray your blessing over your people today, Lord. And Lord, that as we come into alignment, I pray your blessing over every life. I pray your blessing over every marriage. I pray your blessing over every sickness. I pray, oh God, heal your people today, Lord. I pray, Lord, release us from bitterness and unforgiveness. I pray, release us from our sin. Lord, release people from addiction and bondages, Lord. Lord, it doesn't matter what's binding us. What matters is, is there, there is a Jesus who came to set the captive free, to open up the prison doors. And Lord, we need your blessing. We need your blessing. We need your favor. We need your anointing, Lord. Oh, just begin to worship. Just begin to say, Lord, I need your touch today. I need your presence. I need you, Lord. Lord, I can't do it without you, Lord. We can't do it without you, Lord. You said if we abide in the vine and you abide in us that so we can ask anything we will. Lord, I'm praying right now for the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead to dwell within us, Lord. Oh, Lord, we praise you. We give you honor. We give you glory. Let's just begin to praise and we're going to sing this song in closing. But listen to the Lord bless you and the Lord keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. That's a reason right now. Let's just begin to worship him for the next couple of minutes as they lead us in this song. Hallelujah, Lord. Glory to your name, Lord. Lord, we worship you. We worship you. We worship you, Lord. Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon you. And be gracious to you. Lord, turn his Hallelujah. face towards Hallelujah, you. Lord. And give you Lord, peace. just lift up your hands and worship him. Just worship him. Let him touch you today. Hallelujah, Come Lord. on, worship him. Hallelujah, Lord. Lord, bless you. Hallelujah, And Lord. keep you. Make his face shine upon you and be gracious. Oh, bless your people, bless your people. Lord, turn his face toward you and give you peace. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah.
Hallelujah. You walk out this tent today knowing God is for you. And I pray again, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you this week. May the Lord be gracious to you and to your children and to your grandchildren. May the Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. Father, I pray your blessing over your precious people today. I pray, oh God, that they would walk out saying, yes, Lord. Lord, thank you for your presence. Thank you for your favor. Thank you for your blessing over our lives. And Lord, we'll give you the praise, the honor, and the glory. For we ask it in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, amen. God bless you today.